Hello and welcome to Big Picture. I am Vishal Dahiya. Amidst continuing protests in the Kashmir Valley, the state of Jammu and Kashmir is back in focus. Classes in colleges across Kashmir have remained suspended for the fourth day. In fact, a lethal combination of protests, demonstrations, stone pelting and armed attacks has thrown a big challenge for the political establishment, police and security forces. So where lies the solution to all this? We have a distinguished panel of guests with us today to discuss this. Let me introduce you to our guests. Uh, Malmiki Prasad Singh, a former governor and uh, former Home Secretary is with us. Then we have uh, retired Major General Ashok Mehta, he's a security analyst. We also have with us senior journalist Bharat Bhushan, who is uh, editor Catch News. And uh, there's another senior journalist with us, uh, Mr. Ashok Tandon. And we'll also be joined in by uh, one more guest from Kashmir, but a little later. So let's begin the discussion and let's begin this with uh, Bharat Bhushan. Sir, the situation is, is pretty much, uh, you know, uh, boiling up. It's, it's, it's being said that it is going out of control as far as uh, the security establishment is concerned, as far as the local administration is concerned. How serious do you believe the situation in Kashmir Valley right now is? It's going to get much worse. That's what I can predict if uh, you don't do something. Mm -hmm. And that something is pretty simple. Stop using the national security doctrine to look at Kashmir. Start talking to people. Uh, improve the human rights situation. Uh, have better policing and better use of the security forces. Uh, do not do silly things like tying people in front of jeeps and taking parading them around for 20 odd kilometers. Stop uh, uh, making uh, videos. The security forces must stop making these silly videos of their uh, uh, despicable acts and putting them on social media. So I think we really need to put our minds together, improve the human rights record, start a political process, talk to all the stakeholders. If you don't do this, the situation is going to be much worse than last summer. You're saying the, the, the idea is to improve the human rights record, start talking start involving people. But you also spoke about uh, certain videos and there seems to be a battle of narratives. Uh, you know, the videos are coming in from the both sides. Uh, uh, some uh, are showing uh, the security forces being attacked, uh, being thrashed. And then uh, one video which you spoke about a man tied in front of a, a army jeep. Uh, uh, let me bring in uh, Balmiki Prasad Singh Ji. You've been a, a governor, you've been a home secretary as well. Is this a very peculiar situation in Kashmir or is this something which is uh, uh, being seen uh, all over again <coughs> but just with a little bit of more violent push? No, this is uh, quite serious. Mm -hmm. uh, not that uh, we have not had such or more serious situations in the past. Mm -hmm. But this is quite serious. And uh, this is not the time to blame because uh, I find limitations of human intelligence operating there, mm -hmm. protests are ending and at a stone pelting mm -hmm. and uh, the security measures have degenerated into human seals. What we have to seriously think about is to how to reach to the humanity of each individual. Mm -hmm. And that is a serious job and uh, democracy is there, the framework is there and we expect our leaders to uh, start talking. Okay, yes. let, let me bring in uh, the security analyst amongst us, uh, uh, Major General uh, Ashok Mehta. Sir, uh, there are a lot of questions which are being raised as far as uh, the role and uh, the present uh, actions, uh, you know, some of them which have been taken by the security forces. Do you uh, agree that, uh, you know, despite the fact that uh, there have been, uh, you know, fingers which have been raised in the past as well, and the security forces have been in the state, uh, specifically in the valley for quite some time, but this time around, uh, some part of the security forces, maybe uh, someone has lost the plot somewhere? No, I don't think the security forces have lost the plot. Mm -hmm. The plot has been lost by the politicians. Okay. And the plot has not been lost now. Mm -hmm. It was lost 30 years ago. Okay. And that plot needs to be brought to the table. See, we must remember that we have parliamentary resolutions that talk about retaking every inch of territory in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. In the POK. Yeah. But what happens to the people? 
वॉट आर वी डूइंग अबाउट द पीपल ऑफ जम्मू एंड कश्मीर वॉट इज यूज ऑफ टेरिटरी वेन यू लॉस्ट द पीपल एंड आई थिंक वी हैव रीच द स्टेज इन दिस कंट्री वेर नॉट आफ्टर थर्टी ईयर्स वेन दैन द इंसर्जेंस इज स्टार्टेड आफ्टर द रिग इलेक्शन बट इट इज सेवेंटी ईयर्स वेन आई फर्स्ट वेन टू जम्मू एंड कश्मीर एज अ सोल्जर इन नाइनटीन फिफ्टी सेवन and i've been going there on an average every 5 to 7 years since then till i retired mm -hmm. there was a time when when soldiers used to go past youth used to line up on the road give us flowers and cheer them up give us apples give us fruit and we would reciprocate with sweets and things like that now they give you stones yeah but it's it's a complete different picture now so let me explain very briefly why this is this transformation has taken place this transformation has taken place because you have lost the people mm -hmm. you have you are more interested in territory than people and no counter in what is the job of the military the job of the military is to create a situation which is conducive for a political settlement mm -hmm. that that condition creating those conditions the military has done not once but several times over in the last 30 years we have brought down the terrorist population from 3000 to less than 300 so we have created the condition but it's, now now it's for the politicians now you said to go ahead and take the next step now they have to take the next step but the politicians are neither governing nor thinking of a, polit a political solution what is this agenda of alliance okay let me let me let me bring in uh, uh, mr tandon out here mr tandon uh, do you agree with uh, mr mehta that politicians have lost the plot and uh, is it that uh, the plot has been lost in last uh, few months or maybe years or has it been uh, making of uh, you know uh, previous past governments as well see while the points mentioned by all my co panelists are well taken mm -hmm. but we should not forget one thing that the situation in jammu and kashmir cannot be viewed in isolation because of the indirect or rather direct involvement of our neighbor mm -hmm. no in the last 70 years pakistan has been overtly or covertly in indulging into the kashmir valley instigating terrorists sending terrorists from across the border and also influencing the local politician so when our neighbor is bent upon creating trouble in jammu and kashmir particularly in kashmir for which they are all of their previous rulers have been on record particularly general musharraf has been on record saying that yes we are doing it why okay. should we not do it so therefore we can't discuss the situation so, in in jammu and kashmir valley only from the domestic or the local point of view so we have to keep in mind the what is in the mind of our neighbor well, yes, so if he is bent upon creating trouble so we will have to there, see there the is, situation there, there is an reality. external element as well uh, that that's what you're pointing out uh, yeah. at uh, mr tandon but uh, uh, let's uh, also not forget that the domestic element is as much important as uh, you also said and other panelists are also saying in fact we have with us uh, uh, right now a representative of the ruling uh, uh b pdp in uh, the state of jammu and kashmir uh, mr elias nazir with us on the phone line mr nazir uh, if you can hear me there are a lot of uh, fingers which are being pointed out at the political dispensation in the state specifically the state government uh, first is what said that it's a unnatural coalition which has come to power that's the bjp pdp now the coalition seems to be under a lot of stress and things seems to be going out of control for your party and for the government as well yeah let me put the point like in a situation where socio political aspirations and grievances of the people have wide ranging differences economic developments on its own they cannot bring peace and prosperity mm -hmm. so we will have to club both political process and developmental perspective as well pdp did not form the coalition for power or any privilege but this government was formed to start and resume a half way left reconciliatory process to heal the wounds of the conflict with kashmir but now what we are seeing today is that the government has the central government has focused on only one point that's the developmental perspective and has forgotten the 
points laid down in the agenda of alliance relating to the so, political so, so are you points. saying are you saying mr nazir so, that all, uh, there is a lot of disconnect between both the coalition partners the bjp and the pdp as of now no the the disconnect is not there between the two coalition partners what i am trying to put before you is that the government could not be afforded time proper time could not be given to the government to bring what was there on the agenda of alliance you know the recent past 2016 year the whole year was in the turmoil now afterwards what 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 do you expect when apart from your neighbors as has been rightly pointed by my fellow panelists what when our own people are held bent upon aggravating the situations when the people like dr farooq abdullah is instigating the youth of the people that the people that the stone pelters are fighting for their nation and his own son does that mean he is not the nation lover when he is not stone pelter but uh, such, such kind of charges have, uh, have been traded between uh, you and the national conference that's the pdp and the national conference uh, quite a number of times stay with us uh, we'll come back to you let me bring in uh, mr bhag bhushan out here quite an interesting narrative uh, coming up uh, uh, mr bhushan uh, the coalition partner one coalition partner says that uh, you know uh, the other coalition partner did not focus on the political part of it uh, uh, do you believe that there is a lot of disconnect between uh, both the alliance partners now in fact uh, there were a series of meetings which took place to try and iron out the differences let me put it this way this was uh, 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 an alliance of convenience mm -hmm. because there was a uh, uh, split verdict but uh, having said that they did uh, have an agenda of uh, uh, governance mm -hmm. and that agenda of governance said one of the main things it said is that this coalition will talk to all the stakeholders to address the kashmir issue including all the huriyat uh, uh, factions now that multi dimensional dialogue should have taken place that is the responsibility of both uh, the pdp and the bjp the two coalition partners mm -hmm. but having said that the issue of kashmir does not lie with the state government it lies with the central, government. the central government and the central government has been found terribly wanting in uh, uh, following a political approach to kashmir it's not sufficient for the bjp to say that we will rule from kashmir to kanyakumari you are ruling kashmir today how are you ruling it it's absolute misrule why is it, is it misrule because you do not see the politics of the situation you are not addressing it politically you are addressing it through the lens through the prism of national security where you say you will beat the hell out of people and they'll fall in line in a democracy that is a recipe for disaster and that's the disaster we are seeing uh, unfolding before our eyes in jammu and kashmir let me bring in uh, mr tandan here mr tandan uh, is this uh, do you agree with uh, mr bhushan is this uh, Uh, actually a recipe of uh, disaster because uh, uh, given the statements kind of statements which have come in from uh, the bjp's uh, ministers in the state government in jammu and kashmir uh, you know the tensions uh, are uh, seemingly at a all time high between the coalition partners uh, as they can be in uh, the sensitive state of jammu and kashmir see firstly it was not an easy task for the bjp to join a coalition with pdp mm -hmm. let's also not forget this mm -hmm. the kind of sentiment the party faced in jammu but having done that and prior to that prime minister visiting srinagar kashmir and repeating what vajpayee had said that we want to find a solution to the problem in the spirit of kashmiriyat jammuriyat and insaniyat no modi repeated it and it was a gesture which is wanted to continue from vajpayee era mm -hmm. so i don't agree with bharat that the central government uh, has not been doing what it was supposed to be doing no these two factors mm -hmm. firstly joining hands with pdp to form the government in spite of opposition from the jammu section of uh, jammu faction of the party no that was also a gesture toward conciliation mm -hmm. and then offering a solution in the spirit what i said so i think i don't know why my co panelists are intentionally not bringing in pakistan into it the role of pakistan is playing in okay. the valley okay that's that's a quite an important question and and that uh, brings me to uh, 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 mr uh, uh, mr singh mr singh uh, do you believe that uh, the external factor which uh, mr tandon pointed out in his first answer as well so there are a very pressing and important domestic factors as well which uh, mr bhushan pointed out but do you believe the external factor is also that very important and it's the, playing a very crucial part as far the, as the present situation is concerned the external factor is very very important and it is playing a big role but what i am trying to uh, convey is that we need not take extreme views okay while taking cognizance of the external factor for there the government of india has taken a stand and whether they should revise that stand is uh, 
something that has to be internally decided. The second point is, which is related, nothing is preventing this PDP, BJP combination yeah, leadership of the state to start a dialogue mm -hmm. with all the stakeholders living within the valley. If they feel that, look, as Mr. Bhushan was saying, of course, he was saying in a different language, that the center is required. Okay. Let the home ministry send the representative. If the chief minister wants a certain level of representation in that dialogue, the prime minister should order that. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, you have to talk within your own society. Okay. And once you consolidate a stand within your own <coughs> social structure and political structure, it should be possible for us to think of devising ways and means and okay. this is being done how to tackle pakistan how to how to tackle pakistan specifically how to tackle the situation as well let me bring in uh, uh, major general mehta uh, you've served in kashmir you've seen the situation from close quarters uh, the external element uh, does exist it used to exist and it will continue to exist as well and there is also one very important part that the external element that that's the neighbor our neighbor pakistan playing a role there will definitely bring in uh, back in focus the central government as well but as you're pointing out earlier that the politicians it is the politicians who seems to have lost the plot so do you believe that just involving people making them talk or rather bringing them to a particular you know a talking table will that solve the problem as of now or, 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 or is this just one of the steps a lot of confidence building measures need to be taken you know the accession of Jammu and Kashmir is quite different from the merger of other states. We made certain promises to the people of Kashmir. Mm -hmm. And I think it is the job of the political hierarchy in this country, not just to talk and engage people, but there must be outcomes. Okay. We've had series of round tables. We've had joint working groups. We've engaged stakeholders. We've had interlocutors in the past. What happened? Nothing happened. So the government of the day has to decide that the people of Jammu and Kashmir, and by the way, I have just come back from Dubai where there was an India-Pakistan dialogue only last week mm -hmm. where we had Kashmiris from both sides. Okay. The Kashmiris are saying that we don't like the status quo. This question of the situation being at stone pelting and accusing Pakistan. Look, Pakistan is a factor. Mm -hmm. And Pakistan is a factor because we have not kept our house in order. If you keep your house in order, how the hell can a burglar come in? So the moral of the story is that don't shift the blame, all the blame. Of course, Pakistan is interfering. Mm -hmm. If you had kept your house in order, Pakistan would not have the opportunity and the space to do what it is doing. It finds this ungoverned space, corrupt space, and Pakistan is in it. So okay. we have to alter the ground situation. And then move ahead on it. And, uh, no, not and then. Mm -hmm. And we must engage. We must engage, as Bharat says, uh, the agenda of alliance is a signed document mm -hmm. between Ram Madhav and the PDP mm -hmm. and that document that document must be honored in in in, in letter and spirit but that's and what that's what that's what the, one of the alliance partners uh, mr bhushan we just heard uh, that's what one of the alliance partners is saying no, that but the he's agenda also, of alliance he's, he's also saying mm -hmm. that you don't replace development from uh, or replace devolution further devolution with development this is what the sri lankans did Mahindra Rajapaksa did with the Tamil that uh, that you don't talk about uh, the political aspiration mm -hmm. of the people, but you say I'll give you new roads. Prime Minister, let me let me let me let me, uh, I mean, tourism and and let me bring in uh, Mr. Mr. Bhushan here. Lot of uh, you know factors coming in into place, and all these factors, uh, be it the involvement of our neighbour, or be it uh, you know uh, bringing everybody on a a round table, ensuring that the dialogue process begins, uh, uh, taking uh, uh, confidence building majors. All these are the steps which seemingly 
state government alone cannot do. Do you believe it's time for the centre to step in now? That's what I said earlier, that the issue of Kashmir lies with the centre, not with the state government. Mm -hmm. State government is there, you know, despite whatever the kind of election uh, you hold, is there for service delivery. People tolerate them. There's a utilitarian uh, aspect to the state government. It's the center, central government which has to uh, uh, take the initiative in talking to Pakistan. After all, when we were having the composite dialogue with them, Kashmir was one of the issues which we decided to discuss. We tell the entire world that you know Kashmir is a bilateral issue between India and Pakistan. But it's a peculiar so there is situation. A of talking to them. Uh -huh. So I'm saying, go on, talk to them. Uh -huh. Talking doesn't mean you'll give Pakistan uh, Kashmir, but you'll at least begin discussing. Even if you want to get back whatever they have. But so you need dialogue for that. Uh -huh. You need dialogue with the separatist leaders. Uh -huh. You need dialogue with the youth. Figure out you know, what disturbs them. You need dialogue with civil society. You need dialogue with businessmen. Why are they supporting but has the state government? Has the state government been able to deliver on it? Despite the fact that uh, uh, the same party is in power uh, with, a, with a coalition partner in the state and in the centre as well. How can the state government deliver on dialogue with Pakistan? No, not it with cannot Pakistan, deliver. but other confidence building measures which have, to, which have to be taken. It has taken some measures. Mm -hmm. It has released those young kids, you know, mm -hmm. who were first time stone pelters. They were released. It's setting up blind schools. It's offering free treatment to uh, uh, people who uh, got blinded or partially blinded with pellet guns. But okay. it's for the central government to take even internal measures. Pellet guns will have to be banned by the home ministry. Okay. You have a former home secretary and governor sitting here saying that it's very easy for the home minister of to, India to, to send a representative to send talk a to Send a representative people. and initiate Why the process. Why don't they do it? Initiate Why the don't process. they do it? Let me bring in now, Mr. Tandon. We are running very short of time. Mr. Tandon, do you agree with uh, Mr. Bhushan that it's time for the centre to step in finally and bring the situation in control? No, I agree that the centre has a role, mm -hmm. but the fact remains that even dialogue with Pakistan <clears throat> cannot be in isolation. Look, the dialogue process has been going on for the last 70 years. Every regime has indulged into or involved Pakistan. Vajpayee, in fact, went to the extent of going in a bus to Pakistan. Mm -hmm. But what happened? No, therefore, I am again emphasizing, and I, if you want, I can quote General Musharraf, that we will continue to get involved in Pakistan so long as we get Kashmir. Now, if that is the mindset of the rulers in Pakistan, mm -hmm. so we can't have peace in the valley. So, therefore, to have peace in the valley, we have to engage Pakistan in dialogue, but at the same time create global public opinion against what Pakistan is doing in Kashmir, terrorism. Is, is now a global issue. So we need to expose Pakistan at the uh, global level and then force Pakistan to come to terms and have dialogue with us. Okay, okay, let's, yes, let's quickly, let's quickly yeah, have yeah, one final one, word uh, uh, straight away. Yes, the, yes, the yes. The governor yes. of the state, mm -hmm. Jammu and Kashmir, says there should be dialogue with stakeholders. The chief minister of the state says there should be dialogue with the stakeholders. The army commander, General Huda, was the first on 27th of September to say there should be dialogue. Army guy uh, telling the politicians, please engage. Now, if you've had all this done, what is the central government doing? Okay. Why, because why is the central government not say, taking the initiative? Because as uh, to start the dialogue said, process, sir. Yes, to uh, start uh, the dialogue uh, process, General, will, let the me, green light. We're running short of time. Let me bring in uh, 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 Mr. Singh as well. Do you also believe that uh, dialogue is the key word right now? Developmental initiative should also work, but then right now, dialogue is the key word. Dialogue within the valley is the key word. And I would like the Honorable Chief Minister of Jammu and Kashmir to start the dialogue. If she wants, she should request the Prime Minister to send a representation at a suitable level from the center. But within the house, the dialogue has to be initiated. It is already getting very, very late. Okay, Mr. Bhushan, 10 seconds concluding comment from you. Dialogue, that's the keyword. That is where we stand right now. Dialogue uh, with all the stakeholders at the initiative of the center. The state government cannot talk to separatists. It Obviously. doesn't have the mandate to talk to them. Mm -hmm. The ball is in the prime minister's court. And I think he, it's high time he and his advisors shunned this national security doctrine, the state doctrine of uh, saying that we'll force people to put mm -hmm. into submission and start talking to them. That's start. how our democracy functions. Start talking to the people. So that seems to be the sentiment uh, as far as our panel of guests is concerned. And that seems to be the key word being the dialogue, the process to be initiated with all the stakeholders and the onus 
seemingly lies with the politicians, not only those who are in the state, but specifically those who are in the center right now, ruling the country. So that's it from us on this particular topic in the big picture today. We'll come back again with a different topic. Till then, keep watching Rajasabha Television.